Well, hello there, Suzuki maintenance freaks. I'm doing a little bit of, I guess you could call it maintenance. Uh, it's, you know, it's tiddling around right now. Um, I don't have much else to do today, so I decided to come out and do a little engine check. Do you ever do that? Look at things, take the Tupperware off the sides, look at some anodes. You know, I'm thinking about possibly changing the oil early. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow or later on this afternoon. Um, checking my zincs, you know, my anodes. Some of y'all don't even know what anodes are. I mean, I've had people ask in the comments of other videos, what's an anode? Well, an anode is the thing that gives up its metal to protect your outboard and or your boat like me. I've got big anodes hanging off the back of the transom of my aluminum boat. So, but I just wanted to show you something. You know, I, on my old outboard, it was really clogged up. You know, really clogged up. And I used a lot of this Ridline Marine, uh, Marine Descaler, you know, to get up inside the water jacket and get all the muck and salt and, you know, dirt. I had a dirt problem. And when you got a dirt problem, then you get a serious salt problem. So uh, that all stems from believe it or not it stems from using the flush ports on your outboard around here you know i'm, I'm I, I do salt water charters it's salt water the the uh, saying that we have is water water everywhere and there's not a drop to drink in the county so other than ponds which there's ponds everywhere but where i fish it is extremely dirty water, meaning particulates of dirt and debris mixed into the water. And it's highly, uh, you know, salt, saline water, ocean water that comes all the way up into the river where I do a lot of my fishing and at the inlet. So I was using the flush ports and I used them for a couple years not really thinking i was thinking oh yeah man this this is what it says in the book you know use the flush ports and i did they're quick they're easy everybody uses them i know but what it did is it never really cleaned out the engine and now i'm talking my old suzuki 250 it was like a 2015. so it has the pointy kind of nose cone on the gear case and they literally say oh just put duct tape on it and put the earmuffs on it and run the engine i don't like that so i've got multitudes of videos about this i might be able to find them in the 800 900 videos that i have of uh all that i don't i don't want to bore you with that though um but what i have is i've got you know about a half gallon of this rib lime left from all my descaling that I did and I come to find out that it is really great for maintenance this anode is ate up it's over a year old all right it was ate up I mean it's got it's got all kinds of pits in it and stuff like that but when I just took it off, it was covered in barnacly kind of salty looking stuff. I don't even know what to call it. But that's what red lime's all about. Red lime eats up mussels, shells, it dissolves salt, barnacles, lime, calcium buildup, rust. That's what it does. And it leaves behind 
a clean part, a really clean part. So if you ever get the chance and you're doing your maintenance, you know, you're doing your once over, you're doing like I am, I'm just checking stuff out. Put a little of this red lime, I got it just a little tub here, and I got more in this old peanut jar. And then what I do is I just soak my anodes in there to clean them up. There's nothing wrong with this anode. You know, you really don't replace your zincs or anodes until they're at least half gone by weight, probably, is what they would refer to that as. When it's half gone or more, go ahead and replace it. But I mean, this wasn't half gone. It's eaten up. It's doing its job. Okay, but it was encrusted in the, the salt water goo, you know. So <coughs> what I did is I soaked it in the, in the, in the red line, and it takes all that off, and then I put it back on. Because the cleaner this is, the more it's going to really do its job. Clean anodes are going to do their job way more than ones that are encrusted in salt and, and grime, okay? And I'm gonna show you where this one came from on a Suzuki 250, on a 2020 Suzuki 250. It's one of them hidden ones. It's kinda of hidden, you don't think about it. There's a many anode that you kinda of don't think about. Suzuki just loves to hide them. Uh, you know, I'm almost thinking. I don't, you know, I, I saw a 300 Yamaha last time I took my boat into the shop just to have the uh, water pump changed. And I'm standing there looking at twin 300 Yamahas. And I don't see a zinc anywhere. I don't see an anode, square anode anywhere. I turned to the mechanic and I looked underneath and there's the cavitation plate fin, okay, that sticks down above your prop. And that was the anode. That was the only anode you could see. And I said, hey, Mike, is this the only anode? And he goes, ah, well, yeah, that's, that's for, you know, that's for the bottom half of the engine. Well, boy, is that easy. Unless there's a couple hidden in there somewhere. But that's easy to change. I kind of like that. But is it really kind of capturing the entire essence of what's going in the water? You know, I don't know. I guess it is. I'm not a Yamaha engineer. I'm not a Suzuki engineer. But Suzuki puts them. Puts these all over. They're small. I had Honda. I've had two Hondas. Hondas are huge compared to this. Huge. Uh, but they're these things are kind of hidden all over. I've got videos where I show you the ones that are in the water jacket, you know, near the spark plugs kind of thing up in there. You know, they've got ones up in there. They got them kind of hidden around. So get really familiar where all your zincs or your anodes are. And this is just an easy way to clean them up. And I'll show you where this one came from. All right, it's gonna be a little tough to see. It's kind of dark in here, I know. There's not much I can do about it. All right, but here's the Tupperware for the side. There's the, where the engine drain hole would be. These are a real pain in the balls to put on and off. Here's the side of the engine. No Tupperware. Here's your oil pan. Here's my other anodes down here. See how white and chalky? They get all white and chalky. See, it comes right off on my hand, on my finger. These are the two that really get abused the most for some reason on my entire boat. I guess there's another one over here. So there's three that get seriously abused in my water. But you got another one up here. 
this right here I've showed this before there's your oil pan so you got one sitting right up underneath your oil pan where your exhaust probably goes down right here but this one sits right here and it's underneath that piece of Tupperware so unless you take this Tupperware off unless you take this off you're never gonna know that there's one right in there and unless you take this Tupperware off you're never gonna know that there's a, one of the round ones up in here you're never gonna you're never gonna see that you've got to disassemble this side I'm trying to get a I'm hoping you can see it's a black engine it's tough it's black you can't see nothing believe me I have a hard time and I'm sitting right here but I'm gonna put this one back on I mean another place there's a zinc or anode believe it or not is there's the nose cone for my engine I call this the nose cone back in the old racing days they used to literally put pointy you know lower unit things on there to go faster but believe it or not there's a round one hidden right there everybody probably forgets about that so that's what I'm dabbling in right now I'm just just dabbing dabbling around I might clean these up these are relatively new I changed I changed these out already when they were a year old they weren't eight half up but you know you know I'm a maintenance freak I mean just to show you what's on my boat okay there's a giant one that's literally on the stern of my boat it gets all salt and crusted and nasty eaten up and then I've got this one that's a little donut one that's on both sides of this plate this would be a transom uh, transducer plate just like that over there there's where my trans transom transducer is see on the aluminum boat world they build everything for a purpose you just don't go screwing into your hull okay but you're with your uh, you know lag bolts and stuff and 5200 and all no an aluminum boat we're not doing that they build we build brackets here's a water pickup okay here's my trim tab 15 pro kicker and I'll even show you I'm kind of anal just in case and you can kind of I think put on too many anodes but I just put this one on here this is my bracket right here's the one for the mercury it's not really ate up this mercury doesn't you know sit in the water constantly I got it jacked up but just to save see how the paints chipping it's not paint it was I guess it was paint it was like an epoxy paint on here and just to kind of save all this I put one here on bare metal that's a big metal bracketry in there stainless bracket go into aluminum this is aluminum that's aluminum and then just like here there's a stainless bracket right there there's my trim tab so I put one there just because it's dipping in and out of the water I mean it's not getting eaten up that's an old Honda there's a Honda zinc from the side of the lower unit I just used that and bolted it on there so it just give just gives you something to think about instead of changing your anodes right instead of changing them out get some usage out of them that's what they're made for right and I just clean them up with, with my Ridline Marine there's also other stuff called Barnacle Buster and stuff and I'm sure you don't have to buy a gallon on some of these products you could probably get you know a smaller bottle so it's just something to think about and I thought I'd pass it on because here I am I don't know how deep I'm gonna dive today I don't know how deep I'm gonna dive into doing all this but I always knew that those other zincs were behind that piece of Tupperware and uh, yeah that stuff is a pain in the butt 
I don't know how you outboard mechanics put up with those covers on engines. Oh my God. They drive you crazy getting them on and off. I got the word Tupperware. I hear them, other mechanics call them chaps, all kinds of stuff. But, you know, my dad was big into the motorcycle world. And he had, at one time, a ginormous BMW that was kind of like everybody knows the Honda Gold Wings with all the accoutrements all over it. Well, my dad had a, a big BMW and it had all that plastic covers everywhere. And he always called it God dang Tupperware. So that's where I got it. And that's why I call it that on the outboards. So thanks for watching. It was just a little tip and I'll see you on the next one.